Let's get our Bibles out, everybody, and kind of settle in just for a, a few minutes. I'm not going to speak long, about 15 minutes, 17 minutes. Do I have 18? Can I get 19? <laughs> I'm not going to go beyond 20 minutes. <laughs> but I want us all to settle in just for a moment. Let's get our Bibles out. Let's get ready. Today is the 21st day of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. After the service, we cross over into feasting and believing. Fasting and prayer to feasting and believing. So today is the 21st day. Tonight is our last prayer service of the 21 days. I mean, it's Big Wednesday, but it's a prayer service too. We've declared 2020 as the year of prayer. We're gonna pray like we've never prayed before. We're believing that God is gonna move like he's never moved before. And so I wanna take about 15, 20 minutes and just encourage us about the power of prayer. Just very simple. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the measure of my time to Pray. We're going to take the last 10 minutes of the service and we're going to turn this room into a mega prayer service, a mighty prayer service, and uh, finish by 8.30. All right? Are we good? In the year 1666, Sir Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree and an apple fell to the ground. And he thought to himself, why did that apple fall to the ground and not rise to the sky? And so he began contemplating and he began researching and he ultimately formulated what we know as the law of gravity. And he articulated what we have all experienced that what goes up must come down. And it's the same with prayer. Prayer goes up. God's will comes down. Prayer goes up, God's presence comes down. Prayer goes up, God's answer comes down. Jesus said it this way. He said we ought to pray this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. So we pray God's will down to earth. It's our assignment. It's what we're called to do. We pray God's, God's will and God's kingdom down to earth. Prayer moves the arm that moves the world. Prayer moves the arm that moves the world. Like John Wesley said, prayer is where the action is. So I want to give you that the ABCs of prayer, three ways to pray. A, B, C. A, authentic, B, bold, C, corporate. We're gonna end with corporate. We're gonna have five, 10 minutes of corporate prayer. Cool? A, authentic. So we pray real prayer. We can get real with God. We can be honest. We've got real problems. We've got real struggles. God can handle it. He knows what you need before you ask him, but he wants you to be real with him and talk to him about your life. And it needs to be sincere. Isn't it funny how sometimes you call on people to pray and they, they like, they, they, their personality changes. They get, their voice gets deep and they pray. In King James, God. They get all formal. Listen, he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. You, listen, you can be real. You need to be sincere. And then, and, then, and then pray simple prayers. They don't need to be complicated. Simply cry out to God and give him your stuff and give him your daily, your daily challenges and your goals and your dreams. And, and, then, and then you can pray short prayers. Sometimes people get intimidated because they think I don't have enough time. Listen, it's about quality, not quantity. 
It's about making a real connection and getting a download from heaven. And some of the most powerful prayers in the Bible were, 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 were short prayers. M Moses cried out to the Lord uh, in Numbers. He said, please God, heal her. And the Lord replied to Moses. So there are gonna be moments where you and seasons where you pray longer and days where you pray longer and you need to do that, but it's okay sometimes just to throw up a short prayer because again, he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Be bold. We need to be authentic as we pray and we need to be bold with our prayer. And, and when I talk about boldness, I'm, I mean it in two ways. In, in how you pray, everybody say how. How. And, and in what you pray for. And I think sometimes we, we, we're, we're so afraid of being emotional that we don't lift our voice and cry out to God and express ourselves emotionally to him. Jesus said, worship the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And so there's a how to this. There's a how to this bold kind of praying. How many of you know there's a difference? There's a difference between this. Father God, you're sovereign. I need you so much in my life. There's a difference between that and, oh God, I'm desperate for you to move in my life. I need your hand to move in this situation. And you say, well, that's just, uh, you know, that's just emotion. But James said the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man. You know, the word fervent means hot. We need to pray some hot prayers. Like the late Reinhard Bonnke, great evangelist, said we need to pray some hot prayers. You need to heat up your prayer time. Don't be afraid to cry out to God and to lift your voice. In fact, in just a moment, when we turn this place into a corporate prayer service for 10 minutes, I'm counting on, on you to lift your voice with me and not just listen. We're going to pray together. But, but, but boldness, not just in how we pray, but in what we pray for. And I just want to stir you up a little bit. Yes, we're ending our 21 days of prayer and fasting, but I want to encourage you to start praying bigger prayers and bolder prayers. It's like somebody said, if God answered every prayer you prayed today, what would change? What would change? Would the world change or would just your world change? Come on, somebody. One of my favorite books on prayer it's called The Circle Maker. How many of you have ever read that book? Fantastic book. I try to read it every year. Mark Batterson's a great author, and every time I read it, I'm just so challenged about my prayer life and about specifically what I'm praying for. And I feel like I raise my game every time I read that book and I start praying for bigger things. And of course, the, the, the name of the book is, 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 is after a, a, a person who had that nickname, the circle maker, 400 BC, the generation before Christ. There was a severe drought and a whole generation could have been lost if not for the bold prayers of one man named Honey. Honey, the circle maker who went outside, they called on him to pray, went outside, took a, his staff and he drew a circle in the ground and he went inside that circle. He said, Lord, I'm not leaving this circle until you bring the rain. And he didn't. He didn't leave that circle. And God did. God brought the rain. And some of the religious people were offended. They said, how can you just demand that God would move? They were offended by his boldness. But the, <laughs> the bottom line is the Lord wasn't. And the Lord isn't offended when you pray bold prayers. In fact, if you're taking notes, you ought to write this down. Bold prayers honor God, and God honors bold prayers. I said bold prayers honor God, and God honors bold prayers. Speaking of rain, you know how rain works? Rain starts on earth. Had a little drizzle today in Memphis. I don't know if you had to turn on your windshield wipers. I don't really like the rain, just to be honest. And even today, I was praying, Lord, don't let the rain impact our attendance at Big Wednesday. 
because people are afraid of the rain and I can see it really didn't have much of an impact, but, but I know rain is important. The grass gets greener and the flowers are pretty and, 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 and it's necessary, but here's how rain works. The sun heats up the water on earth and it begins to evaporate and the water vapors rise up to the sky. This is actually very simplistic. The water vapors rise up to the sky and the clouds form and, 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 and there's a lot of pressure and then, and then the, 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 the water vapors turn into condensation and they turn into drops and they come back down to earth. The point is just like prayer, rain starts on earth and prayer starts on earth. And I'm believing for some rain. I want it to rain. The rain of God's presence, the rain of God's provision. Come on, somebody. Lord, let it rain. I want it to rain over the seedling house. I want it to rain over the life church. And I've always felt that in this idea of bold, bold prayers and bold steps. I've always felt this, and this is the best way I can articulate it. I've always felt like the Lord moves, um, the Lord moves slowly, suddenly. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, like you feel like God is not doing anything. And it's like inch by inch you're moving forward, right? And, but then all of a sudden there's this like this thrust forth. There's like this breakthrough that happens. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Some of you guys are in that season right now where it's like, is God doing anything? There's, it, it seems so slow. You just have to wait for your suddenly to come because the Lord does move suddenly when he moves. He's always working. You know what I mean? I was reading this verse and I thought about this, this, this story. I just wanted to just throw it out there um, about Elijah and Elisha. And when, when they had crossed, it says in 2 Kings 2, 9, 10, when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what can I do for you before I am taken from you? And Elisha says, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. <laughs> Elijah said, man, you have asked a difficult thing. That's a bold prayer. That's a big thing you just prayed for. Yet, here's the answer. If you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. So the mandate was put back on Elisha. If you stay with me, if you keep your eyes on me, if you wait for me to open the door, if you follow me around, when the moment comes, you'll be ready. How many of you know Elisha didn't take his eyes off of Elijah? Elijah couldn't go to the bathroom <laughs> without Elisha right there. And the day came. What happened? You know, the chariots of fire came from heaven and, and grabbed Elijah and, and, and took him up to heaven. And, and just as he was getting up there, he dropped his cloak outside of that. And Elisha picked up that cloak, double portion. Why? Because he was willing to wait and he was keeping his eyes on the one who could really make a difference. And I, I feel like, you know, I feel like for me, any significant thing that's ever happened for me in my family, in my life, in, in my ministry has always been preceded by, I'm desperate, I'm a little frustrated, I'm wondering if God's gonna do anything, followed by some fasting and prayer and bold, bold requests and, 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 and followed by a little waiting on the Lord. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I was thinking about a story. I'm going to tell you this story real quick about something that happened to us as a church it happened to me 20 years ago. Everybody say 20 years ago. So our church is 23 years old. So uh, 20 years ago, 2000, the year 2000. Anybody remember Y2K? Come on, somebody. Some of y'all like, what? 1999 was not a great year. I'll always remember <laughs> the things that happened in 1999 because of all the Y2K craziness crossed over into the year 2000. And I felt like I was sort of limping. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm still walking, but I'm limping a little bit, a little discouraged, a little flat spiritually. And so I'm not sure if anybody was doing 21 days of prayer and fasting 20 years ago at the beginning of the year. I don't remember, but I was so desperate. I said, Lord, I'm going to fast until there's a breakthrough. 
I'm not going to eat. I went on a hunger strike for the Lord. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It ended up being a 40 day fast. And, um, I feel like you only do one of those in your lifetime. Jesus only did one. So check. <laughs> Cause it was about the hardest thing I've ever done. Halfway through, listen to me, everybody halfway through, I'm driving down Germantown Parkway. Okay. We're, 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 we're in the home builders building. That's where we met for three years. Passing by our building, there's a billboard across the street and I feel like there was like a finger from heaven, literally, that came and pointed out that billboard and I feel like the Lord said, get that billboard. See, we were in a set up and tear down environment as a church. So we had to set up every morning, take down after the service and they didn't let us put any signage out front of the property during the week. So like nobody knew us, nobody knew we were there except for three hours on Sunday. So you like had to look really hard to find Life Church. Who's Life Church and what, what are they about? And so I saw that billboard and the Lord just gave me faith. And I felt like, you know, what happens to me is I kind of felt like a little stir, a little tingle down on the inside. So I, I started believing God and wrote down a little plan and got a little thing printed up. And two weeks later, I'm in front of the church and I said, we're gonna, we're gonna get that billboard across the street. And we're gonna, we're gonna take we're going to take four offerings this year. I'm telling you the details. I want you to lean in with me. We're going to take four offerings this year and we're going to raise $150,000 so we can get that billboard and do some advertising and some promotion and let people know we are here. And uh, man, it, people got excited. Now, $150,000, all right, that may, may as well have been a million dollars, all right, because our total budget for the year was $500,000. So I'm trying to raise $150,000, you know, and, and, you know, we were a small church. And uh, so everybody got excited. That afternoon, I got a phone call. A man said, listen, listen, I love what you're doing. I believe in you. So I'm going to match whatever people give in that first offering that we take in a couple of weeks. I was like, what? And he said, so, you, you know, tell the church, I, I, don't tell them who I am. I want to be anonymous. So I got up and told the church, listen, first offering we took, listen, $35,000. He added another 35. We had $70,000 and we still had three offerings to go. We were halfway there. Yeah. Listen, it gets better. So we get that billboard, 12 month contract. And we put a huge arrow. All I did was put a big arrow. Some of y'all remember big old arrow life church meets here. Big arrow. Yes. The next week y'all ready? The next week I got a letter from the home builders association and they said, um, we're quadrupling your rent. Yes. And we locked into that billboard for 12 months quadrupling. Oh my gosh. My heart sank. We tried to negotiate. They, you know, they, they gave us, eh, they didn't give us much. So we said, we're going to sign 12 months, but we better find another place because we couldn't afford it. We couldn't afford it. So we started looking, we found this place, which is now our Germantown Parkway campus. Yeah. So it's like, wow, this lease was like, the cost of building out that space. In fact, we needed 1.5 million to build out that space at the Germantown Parkway campus. So listen to me, everybody. In a few months, we went from believing God for $150,000 to believing God for $1.5 million. And guess what? We started this, this, you know, fundraising effort and a guy came to me and said, true story. I'm going to give a million dollars of that $1.5 million. What? First, like that 40 day fast, the first and only $1 million gift we have ever had as a church. But we moved in that space. We doubled in three months. We doubled again within the first eight months. See, it was slowly, suddenly. And you know what? That's how God moves in our lives, right? Inch by inch, and then all of a sudden, whoo. And here's C, everybody, C, corporate. The power of praying with other people. 
Think about that, that famous prayer Jesus told us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. How many of you know it is a my Father, you can pray it that way, but it's a corporate prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Jesus said where two or three are gathered together, there I am ready to move. Think about the difference it makes when we pray together. In fact, let's stand to our feet. We're going to move into a little corporate prayer. We're going to keep our faith high in 2020. We're going to keep praying all throughout 2020. In fact, this Saturday, everybody say this Saturday, Saturday. is our first Saturday. We're having Saturday prayer at every location at 10 o'clock. First Saturday of every month. We're going to be praying more in our services. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. Prayer moves the arm that moves the world. I want you to see this verse, and we're going to, then we're going to pray. When they heard this, see if they can put that on the screen for me. When they heard this, they what? They raised their voices. How? So listen, it wasn't just, they weren't listening to the violin. They weren't listening to the trumpet. Everybody was playing. And there was a symphony of prayer. There was an or orchestra. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? It wasn't just one person. They raised, say it again with me, they what? They raised, that's corporate prayer. All of us praying out loud together. And if you've never done it before, it's awesome. Just, just say, Jesus, Jesus, move. We need to move. Whatever. You call on his name. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray all together. We're going to lift our voice all together. And then, and then after a couple of minutes, all right, and you're not going to get tired, right? You're going to keep praying. We're going to pray out loud. We're going to press in together. After a couple of minutes, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for our cities. There's, I don't know, dozens of cities represented in this room. Come on, Bartlett and Germantown, Memphis, Eads, Houston, Texas, St. Louis here somewhere. All kind of cities represented. And in just a minute, we're going to throw, okay, okay, they already did. And just, they're going to take it back down. And then, and then after we finish praying corporately for a few minutes, they're going to put it back up. There we go because we're just going to pray together for a minute, but then we're going to go to the cities. Don't you love all the media people? They're so amazing. They do such an amazing job. All of them, all of them back there. They're all back in the room somewhere. So come on, let's lift our voices together, everybody. Let's start by lifting our hands. Our Father in heaven, we say, hallowed be your name. We hallow your name today. Lord, your, your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We're lifting our hands and we're lifting our voices. Lord, we want more than anything your will done in our lives here on earth, just as it is in heaven. And Lord, we pray, give us today. Come on, raise your voices now. Give us today our daily bread. We thank you for provision in our lives. Come on, I know you need, you need God's wisdom. Ask him for wisdom. I know you need God's peace. Ask him for some peace. I know you need God's joy in your life. Come on, ask him for some joy. Come on, we're raising our voice together. We're turning this into a sanctuary of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask you right now, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who've sinned against us. Lord, even right now, as we're standing in your presence, Lord, even right now, let your Holy Spirit just point out something. If there's anything there, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, Lord. And we pray corporately even for our country, Lord. Your word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, I'll come and I'll hear their land. Lord, we turn away from our wickedness and our sin and we ask you come and heal our land, oh God. We pray for unity and peace across this great country. And Lord, we pray, lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Father God, we thank you. We've submitted our lives to you. We know we can resist the enemy and he has to flee. And so right now in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the name of Jesus, we come against you, Satan. We command you to flee in Jesus' name. We command you to go in the name of Jesus. You have no power. Take your hands off our life. Take your hands off our marriage. Take your hands off our children. Take your hands off in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, for an open heaven. Your favor poured out on our lives. And Lord, right now, we're going to pray. Now you can put it back up. The cities, we're, we're going to pray over our cities right now. You know what I want you to do? Find your, find your place. Come on, Bolivar, Tennessee. We got Jackson joining in with us. Everybody give a shout for our Jackson campus who's connected in with us. Bolivar. Come on, Jasper, Texas. Chesapeake, Virginia. Middletown, New York. All these cities represent people who are here tonight. And so guess what we're going to do? We're going to pray for our cities right now. We're going to believe God for revival in our cities. Will you believe with me for that? Come on, not just here in Memphis, in this region, in Jackson, but across the United States, every city represented. Father God, we pray for these cities right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for revival right now. Jesus, that you would sweep across every city in the name of Jesus, every church that's represented in every city. Let those churches experience great faith, great revival, a great move. Father God, we thank you for doing amazing things in every single city. Thank you for the Bronx. Thank you for Carrollton, Georgia. Thank you for Germantown, Tennessee. Thank you for Mooresville, North Carolina. Thank you for Middlesburg, Kentucky. Thank you for Pell City, Alabama. Thank you for St. Louis and San Antonio and, and, and Rogers and, and Sicklerville. Thank you for revival in our cities. We believe you for it. Come on, in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.